I wake up every morning with a purpose and I see beauty every day in this journey. Learn and hold your head up high and be brave. It might be a bad hair day. You might see wrinkles that weren't there yesterday. But just hold your head high, be brave, and you smile and laugh. Something else that I want to include in this podcast, it's aging gracefully. So if you compliment strangers and believe in the power of simply being kind. And oh yeah, we'll talk about the right clothes that make you look good and feel good. Hi, this is Andrew Rusnak, producer of Coming Home with Barbara McKay. I hope you're hungry, and if not, you will be after this week's episode as Barbara welcomes a very special friend, Armin Desch, to the podcast. Now, Armin is a renowned chef and catering legend in the Charlotte area, and he's joining Barbara to talk all about his adventures in providing food and fun for exclusive events and engagements in the area. He's also the owner of Armin's Catering in Huntersville, and his unique take on traditional dishes brings out the best in everyone. Now, here's Barbara McKay and Armin Desch. Hey, everybody. Those of you who have tuned into my podcast before know that my theme, it's my favorite F words, but you also know that those are faith, family, food, fashion, furry friends, and I'm adding another favorite F word today, and that is friendship. You know, friendship and food just go so well together, so it's so perfect to have my dear friend Armin Desch on the podcast today. So I'm so happy to welcome him. And before he says anything, I want everybody to know that he has this amazing innate talent for turning just ordinary gatherings into these unforgettable feasts. And I'm so thankful to say that he is my dear friend for many, many years, even though he's an award-winning caterer and has culinary excellence and creativity and charm. He's never forgotten me all these years. So thank you, Armin. Thanks, Barbara. It's so nice to see you. Hear your voice again. Well, we we have all kinds of things going on all the time, and I'm so thankful for that very special friendship. We celebrate each other, Armin. And I was trying to remember when we first met. It's as if I have just always known you and your friendship and your talent. Tell everybody where we first met. We first met on the set of WBTV on Thanksgiving Day. I, I used to do the food for Thanksgiving feast for the entire staff. And you were one of the staff that was there getting ready for the parade. And so you were my family. You, you were my family. Other people were yeah, home with we their were families. All one big family. <laughs> we so were. For many, many, many years I catered for WBTV and Thanksgiving Day. And, uh, just got, had just built a great friendship with the whole with the whole crew. Well, so. you were considered family, Armin, and you also had a deli. And my WBTV family members would visit often, including me. Oh yeah, I had a my deli was the Country Boardwalk, and it was right on Kings and Moorhead, right there where the Levine's Hospital is now. And it, it was a great little deli. It used to be a a. a um, what is it? A little grain store, whole, you know, like a whole little mini Whole Foods. But we turned it into this beautiful deli, brought cold cuts in from New York and New Jersey and breads from all over the country and just made it this great deli. And it, and it became a huge hit, naming all my sandwiches after friends, family, streets, and then just created this great vibe where everybody would just, you know, hop down the road and say, let's go to the country boardwalk for lunch. And, you know, it was, it was such a great place with a little balcony. Uh, people could watch everything we were doing and we took tickets with with your names and called people by name and everybody got to know everybody by name that way those were the so days was, those were yeah, the days was, we we was loved great. armin then and if you don't know armin you would love him now he does all these amazing things so I think you were involved in all of our parades and other we did all kind every time we had something special armin was there right Exactly. We did, we did a lot of the parades, a lot of the, you know, family get togethers, you know, things that were important, you know, WBTV, the crew is so busy all the time running everywhere. So uh, when, when everybody had time to get together, I'd get a call and I'd run and go set things up. Friendship and, and food. And, so important. And friendship and food. And, and, you know, we were just down the street. So it was great. It was a great opportunity to get to know people and grow my business because I was new to Charlotte. I was, uh, 
you know, just starting off my own business with a deli, like who would think there would be a deli in Charlotte and you know, 20 some years ago, but um, it, it just, you know, it worked and people loved it and just became a great gathering place for so many people. Because you, you always have felt like a close friend. Tell me when your love of food first began. Mine began in rural North Carolina when I would go to family reunions and church reunions and all those tables and tables of food. And we had organic before organic was cool. What about you, Armin? Tell us a little bit about your food heritage. Well, we have a, I come from a large family of five and my, both my parents came from families of six and seven and my mom was German and Irish. My dad was German, Irish and Polish. So when the families would get together, you know, all these aunts and uncles and cousins and everybody and all the aunts would bring something different, you know, a little bit, a little bit of Polish style, a little German style, a little Irish style. So everybody, everybody brought something. So as I watched, you know, different foods being made, I'd learn, you know, some of my cousins would want to learn the recipe from Aunt Kay or my mom or Aunt Rosemary. Everybody had, everybody had something different to make. So it was really neat. And, you know, just kind of absorbing that as a child yeah. and as a family, you learn to cook for each other. You learn to ration, uh, you know, the big family back in, you know, the seventies, it wasn't always easy to put food on the table. Right. So, uh, we learned how to grow our own produce. Uh, we had a nice big garden. My brother and I'd be out there all the time. And uh, we learned how to make uh, relish. We learned how to make tomato sauce. We learned how to jar, store it, save it, and have it for, for those great winter days when you want something hot, like a nice spaghetti meal or a nice chicken soup. Um, plus, yeah, you're right. It's kind of like back then you were already farm to table. And now we... We're back there again. And, you know, that's the best way to learn to prepare food, and that's through your family. And that's how I did it, too. Did you have any formal training? Uh, no, I did not. Actually, I, I went right from, you know, high school. I, I was uh, going to go off to uh, get an, uh, an attorney degree at Rutgers College, and instead I got involved in, you know, before I graduated and worked in grocery stores. That's and, the you know, I'm best. So busy in, I was in, so busy in high school with stuff. I took a lot of elective courses like FFA and, you know, Future Farmers of America right. and cooking classes and marching band and orchestra. So there's so many things I was involved in. Right. But real life just, lessons. Real life yeah, lessons. Yeah. That is a lesson for today. People need to do that today. Go with their passion and focus exactly. on that. You don't have to have that college education. You can create a wonderful career for yourself if you just follow your passion and work really hard at it. You are perfect example. Well, and I think I think schools like Johnson & Wales are great and CPC sure. has a great food program. But, you know, when you grow up and you have a family, you learn to cook and you learn yeah. how to deal with things. And especially, you know, when you have a little bit of land, you can grow some things. But even if you don't have a lot of land, you can learn how to grow fresh herbs and, you know, make a great salad and, yeah. and stuff. So, you know, I mean, every year we plant our fresh basil and you know, uh, rosemary and everything we have year round. So it's nice being in the South that you have that up North. We didn't have, right, we had exactly. nothing in the winter. I'm That's glad why it we brought you here. <laughs> well, I, I could tell you my, my food experience is very similar. And I worried so much when I got the job at WBTV that somebody was going to ask me where my degree in home ec came from. How did I uh, earn this right to cook on TV? So I ended up traveling back and forth to Washington, D.C. I would get up at 2 o'clock every morning and fly to Washington. I went to Lay Academy de Cuisine, and I got my diploma. Armin, not one person has ever asked me about that. Not one. If if anybody hears that I went there, it's because I brought it up. Nobody cares. All they care about is the the person behind that food and how delicious and wonderful it is. So you have the absolute perfection of training when it comes to food and making people happy with it. That's what it's all about. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and you know, moving here, you know, coming from up north, it was a different world, you know. So 
I had to learn. I had to learn how to make sweet tea and barbecue. You know, <laughs> yeah. we didn't have that up in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, but when you when you when you know about food, you know about food, and all those skills <laughs> transfer right. to to all kinds of food. Uh, and food is a tough business, Armin. You again have been a survivor, and I know that over the past few years, a lot of caterers and restaurant owners and other food businesses have gone out of business, and it just breaks my heart. You have survived. How did you do that? Well, through COVID was really hard. Mm -hmm. Um, As everybody knows in the catering business, you're you're involved in all different types of business. You're catering lunches, corporate events, and weddings. And one of the big things that I do now is wedding and family events and birthday parties and graduations. And, you know, right when COVID hit we had a party for 300 people at the venue i hosted beaver dam mm-hmm. and davidson mm-hmm. and it was for the um a design group that we worked with and that next day the world shut down i mm-hmm. mean it was it was day and night we went from a party you know that was supposed to be 350 to three you know 275 to nothing and what made it so difficult was having to listen to my brides, my couples, Mm -hmm. my families, you know, cry and say, what do we do? You know, what do we do with our deposit? How do, how do we rebook our vet? How do, how do we do this? And God, Barbara, nobody knew what to do. No, no, this this was whole new territory. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, nobody knew there was no answers. Right. So you had to make up answers as you went along. So the the easiest thing to do was try to get the brides to transfer their deposits and move their dates. And then they'd move them again. Then they'd move them again, you know, because we Mm -hmm. don't know how long it was going to last. So that was, that was a hard, hard emotional part of it because, you know, when you're planning a wedding or family event, you become part of that family, Um, you know, and you create a bond. So you hurt when they hurt, and then you try to recreate what they can do to do it. Well, go have your ceremony, go, you know, go, out to a farm, take pictures by a fence, go have your ceremony and plan your party later. You know, so those are things I try to encourage people and uh, keep them inspired and and hopeful that COVID wasn't going to last forever. But it, it took a lot out of everybody and, you know, you know, losing friends, family members and, um, you know, business itself. So I had to I had to kind of reinvent the wheel and, you know, being in the food industry, we were allowed to, um, you know, sell food. So uh, we picked up Facebook and opened up the page and said, let's start preparing meals and selling chicken because you can't get chicken anywhere. And I've got a vendor that has chicken. And we sold frozen chicken, chicken wings, chicken pies, (laughs) everything you could think of and uh, that you couldn't get at the store. Plus, we did family meals. And got to know a lot of our neighbors and friends. And those neighbors and friends are still, you know, friends and clients and ask for things all the time. Because you are, Armin. Because you are. Everybody listening to this, you can see why I love him as a friend and have for decades because of your nature, your passion, your care, your compassion. So you survived because of all of that, because of who you are and how you managed that. It's it's so inspiring and and encouraging. and it, it was tough. It was tough on a lot of restaurants. I mean, we're still, there's repercussions from COVID today and hiring and staffing and mm-hmm. how to pay people and how to get staff to work. Um, but, you know, we had to, we had to pivot in so many ways. I mean, as I said, I could write a book on how to pivot through COVID because there's just so many different things that I had to do. I mean, having, having Beaver Dam as, as a facility for weddings um, and all these families that were stuck home with their kids Um, I finally decided here, you know, this place is sitting here empty. I can't pay my rent. What am I going to do? So I I decided to make it into a pod school. And basically that was a place where people could drop their kids off, have a teacher to educate them through the CMS system. And I became the principal of a school. (laughs) Armin. (laughs) <laughs> you you definitely can transfer those skills. It's it's amazing and inspiring. Uh, speaking of Beaver Dam, oh, do I have wonderful wonderful memories from there? Oh, Tell everybody you. what you did, and I will share some pictures on Facebook and on my social media so you can see a little bit Great. of what he created. Thank but when you. I walked in, I was I, mean, I think I cried, and then just wanted to hug you. 
Tell everybody what you did, how you transformed that into such an amazing place for me and my book signing. Well, as Barbara, as you know, we've been back and forth and re, you know, reinventing our own careers all these years. And we keep running back into each other in different directions. And when you started the book signing, I just said, let's do something fun. Let's do it at Beaver Dam. And you never imagined what I would put together no. for you. No, I did and, not. I was just going to go wherever you told me to go. It's like Armin said for me to be here, so I'm going to be there. Bring, and, bring your banner and yes, bring your books and yes. bring lots of books because you're going to sell them. Which I was amazed. And, it, 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 again, this was – I had no idea that people would – again, it's a tribute to you. People from all over – and to Gary, people from all over came that day. They wanted to support you, the beautiful venue, your amazing food. So keep telling people about that. It was great. Oh, it was wonderful. And we – I – I had set up a throne for my, my queen, Barbara, so that she had her own <laughs> special place to sign like books queen. <laughs> with drapes and flowers. And, you know, we had a lot of participation from other vendors that I work with that I can't even list them all right now. But, I mean, everybody participated. Everybody wanted to be involved, sell some little trinkets. And, you know, Ann Shields is a great artist who came and she displayed all our artwork throughout, the, you know, the facility to make it look beautiful for you. And it was just, it was all about bringing parts of Barbara's life alive and together. Like you were at home. You were at I, home. I'm about to day. cry thinking about it again right now. <laughs> and I, I go through the pictures all the time. I will I will share them. Yes, it, it was just spectacular. And there were so many people there. Again, Armin, they celebrated you. They wanted that wonderful Oh, thank you so you, know, much. you you did something really special too, because you took recipes from my book and turned them into something that was all Armin. And I loved that. Tell everybody about some of the things that you did. And I want to mention one recipe in particular, but you go first and then I'll tell I'll tell oh, about yeah. that. <laughs> I might say it first. <laughs> Who knows? Right, exactly. <laughs> but um when we started doing the signings, I wanted to like recreate your recipes and not rec- recreate them, but put them in a different way that people could see them already made or preparing them on site. So we did a couple different ways, you know, like I would cook food in front of people or make, you know, your soup recipe or your pimento cheese, which was just a big hit and put a little twist on it yeah. and serve it with my, my incredible uh, chips that we make. And we would package those up and hand those to people to take home with a little bit of the pimento cheese. And I can't tell you how many calls I received to find out those that pimento cheese recipe that if they didn't have a book, what page was it on? You know, so it, it, because your special touch. Yeah. It was great just to share the, the knowledge of what you had in the book and my knowledge with food and to bring it together and show people how to make it, how to make it simple, just like you did in the book and to make it for a multiple amount of people, you know, to make it for a group and not just, you know, a family of four. And that's what I want people um, to do. I want people to make the recipes their own. Let that be a starting point, but then do something creative. Now, I'm not sure anybody can do what you do, but the recipes are there for people to enjoy however they want to enjoy them. One that you did that nobody else has ever mentioned, but you chose it. And it was so interesting to me that, because I love this recipe and I knew it would not be one that would jump out at people, but it jumped out at you because of your passion and understanding of food, my horseradish carrots. And I bet there are people right now who heard me say that way. Ooh, (laughs) horseradish Um, carrots. Aren't they they great? Aren't they great? And and (laughs) when I read, when you, I read your story about how your dad used to grow the rat, you know, the horseradish or the radishes in the yard and the root vegetables and all these things that he had. At his fingertips, I was like, I've got to use that recipe, you know, because I'm German. What do we do? We grow potatoes and carrots and, you know, all these great things. So taking that recipe and just putting a little bit of a twist on it and then telling everybody this is this is a perfect dish for Thanksgiving. This is a perfect side dish when you can't think of something to make. And people loved it. It was like it was sweet. It was savory. It was spicy. It was colorful. Um, you know, topped it with some breadcrumbs just to give it a little bit of a crisp. Mm-hmm. And it was just a great recipe. But every single person that was there was asking me, how, did, how what page is this on? You know, I, I've got to get this recipe. So I'm just going to send you out with the book. <laughs> but what was great is people would try the food and 
you know, grab that book and say, I, I need that recipe. You know, I want that one. I want that one. You know, so they, as they try the food and sampled with the things, the great, wonderful things we made. Oh, with, and, and, and you did. And, and accompanying them with some of my, with some of my favorite things to do. So it, it went really well. And that was one of my, one of my favorite ones to do. For I, you, I will it, never forget I, it. I, I saw the story and I could feel the family, you know, vibe to that. I, you know, I was so overwhelmed, I, uh, completely well, overwhelmed. So thank you so much. Th- thank you so much. Speaking of your food, because there are people who have absolute Armin favorites. What are some of the things that people are most uh, ask you most about? And they want. Well, them? I have to. I have to go back to the deli. You yeah. know, years ago. I mean, it's actually 30, uh, 30 years this year. It was nineteen ninety three when I opened the deli, and. Um, I used to make these great sandwiches, and one I called my best friend, who I'm still best friends with, uh, from New Jersey, Beth's Jersey, and we had an artichoke parmesan spread on that sandwich, mm-hmm. similar to your, similar mm-hmm. to your I hot did. tip. Yeah, but it would just it with that with the turkey and the Munster cheese and the sprouts, just you know people just loved it. I, I was rated mm-hmm. number one deli for four years in a row. I won contest at spring fest with that sandwich so that was just it was a blast just to make up something and then turn it into this great sandwich and now i use it for sliders i make little mini sliders out of the turkey sandwich with the artichoke spread i am so and, hungry this is my so <laughs> oh so it, it, it you know that's one of the things i love to make and i just love to make everything i i am a big food lover and learner so mm-hmm. I love to learn different recipes, learn different cultures. Uh, my surrogate mom passed away several years ago, and she taught me so many wonderful recipes from Saudi, from Greece, from oh. you know, from the Mediterranean. Just so many great ideas that she knew, you know, that I tried to carry along. Um, you know, plus she was uh, Miss T- uh, Tennessee, or oh no, Miss. Miss New Mexico years ago. Oh my goodness, and, Armin. I didn't know that. That's so fascinating. Yeah, and she just, when I moved to Charlotte, she became like an instant friend. And that's why I called her my surrogate mom, Be- Beverly McIntyre. And oh. just a great, great friend. We did so many things together. We did so many HIV fundraisers back then. Yeah. Um, and she, we just became best friends. And for I, her New Mexican recipes were wonderful, you know, all different things, you know. So I learned, I learned Southern and I learned Mediterranean from her. I learned all my Northern heritage from up north. So, you know, it it is nice, you know. You have to listen to people when they talk sometimes. Yeah. And 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 see what they're making and and listen to them so you can learn how to do things on well, you, your own. And, you have such a gift. I mean, it's just a, a God-given gift, and you have used that gift. You have uh, expanded it. You have studied. You have worked. You appreciate what other people can bring to it. It's um, it's just fascinating to hear about all this. Like I said, I'm hungry. Is is there anything you don't like to cook? You know what? I I, I it's one of one of my better dishes, but I hate making it because it's so messy. I make <laughs> it's a it's a Mediterranean dish, and it's orzo with cucumbers, tomatoes, fresh mint, mandarin oranges, and feta cheese. And I just hate making it because it makes such a mess. Well, I think you might have just convinced people that they want more of it. We might not should have oh, talked about that. Oh, they do. They want so much of it, especially <laughs> in the summertime. That's when that's when those menus are a big hit. And, you know, I make a lot of barbecue, too. I, like I said, that's something I had to learn how to make when I moved down here because we didn't have pork pulled barbecue up north. Well, let's so, talk about that. Tell me about that. How did you perfect yeah, that? So, yeah, so I was like, barbecue, you know, I get out the grill and throw some ribs on and some burgers, and everybody's like, no, that's not right. southern barbecue. No. I'm like, well, what is southern barbecue? You know, so I I had to, like, venture into that. And, you know, we didn't have all these TV shows back then that you learned every recipe that you can see now, like with Guy and, you know, all these other superstars that, that make these show barbecue shows and contests, but I learned to uh, learn the process. And, you know, a- after the years, it's, it takes 14 hours with a nice hickory smoke to get a really perfectly good barbecue. Um, and you put it in, put it in, don't touch it and let it do its magic. And it just comes out perfect every time. Put, put it in where, where, where are we talking about a pit I in actually, your backyard? Actually, or? <laughs> yeah. You put it in, 
put it in your put it in your smoker, put it in your your grill, your oven, whatever. However you choose to make it. I mean, that's the joy about pulled pork is you can you can really do it so many different ways. You just got to give it the time to cook and 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 marry its flavors together so that when you take it out you pull that pork apart and it's just juicy and ready to eat (laughs) i'm so so very hungry i want to back up about one other thing because you do all this cooking for all these special occasions um you do a whole lot of wedding receptions so let me ask you have you run into any really kitchen nightmares in all of this well you know there's a we work at a lot of venues and you know, some of these venues make things very difficult for you to work. You know, they don't have a kitchen, they don't have a sink, they don't have running water, but they have this beautiful facility right. or they have this barn with horses in it and lots of flies. <laughs> you know, so there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of things that you can find when you're outside catering, you know, and it, it it's hard sometimes to deal with that. And then, you know, when you have brides that, just are so in love with their venue and forget about anything else. But they want that food to be delicious. Never mind what you have to go through to make it happen. There's always one crazy bridezilla out there, but you know, I've been pretty blessed that I haven't had a lot. I had uh, one COVID bride. I won't mention her name and I'll just say she was an absolute nightmare. And you so, will never forget that. And if she has well, another we'll wedding, you won't be it. there. <laughs> yeah, we, we 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 were told to erase pictures because somebody got in front of the somebody got in the ceremony pictures. So I was like, okay, the things we worry about during COVID, um, you know, there's just so many bigger things for people to worry about. Than right. Who's in the photo? Right. No, I never thought about that about the farm scene and the horses and the flies and the. Food. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, people don't realize I have some. <laughs> You can't have fruit outside at a farm a house or near a barn in October because the bees are everywhere. Oh, no. You well, know, I'm or, sure on, I don't or do on that. a yacht. Same the same thing with a yacht. We cater a lot on the yachts. Oh, you do? Tell yeah, me about that. Like, well, they're, oh, they're fun. They're fun. They're, they're a little tough too because you don't have a kitchen or anything. So you gotta bring everything ready to go. Um, there's several different lots, Lake Nor- uh, yachts on Lake Norman that hold up 50 to a hundred people. And I have to and, mention you were the number one, most favorite, most awarded caterer uh, in the area. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I, I've done quite a few and several weddings and this is, this is actually a funny story, but good friends of ours lived across the street from us, really wanted to do their wedding on the boat, yada, yada, yada was what it's called then. And um we they invited 100 people so we had a big crowd and he wanted to do it up to the nines he wanted a nice carving caviar shrimp you know everything that for everybody to come in and have that just was seafood related Mm -hmm. and it was just this beautiful ice sculpture display filled with shrimp and and caviar and i keep saying caviar because it was so expensive Mm -hmm. and everybody went upstairs and we're passing hors d'oeuvres and there's more food upstairs and the boat goes to take off. And just as the boat takes off, the whole top of the ice carving with the caviar and the shrimp <laughs> went right into the lake. No. All the the shrimp, too? Everything? <laughs> Everything. Did you just dive in? <laughs> Is that going to save this? <laughs> just the bottom layer was left. I, I was like, no. they're kidding me. Oh, there, no. was, there was no way to catch it. It's just too heavy to catch. So, uh I'm sure. I'm sure somebody found some stuff on the shore. <laughs> no, but I'm sure they wondered what that was floating needless by. Needless to say, needless to say, the couple didn't stay married. Yeah. Either. <laughs> <laughs> you have so many stories, I have no doubt. But back to the to our simple kitchens at home. Are there any particular tools that you always have in your kitchen at home that make cooking a little easier? Well, good sharp knives always yeah. help. Um, and I, you know, I like to have good, you know, pans, you know, to cook in, whether it be copper or, you know, whatever, just uh, uh, having a good clean pan. You know, when pans get scratched and scuffed, it's time to go, you know, just have good pans that you can actually cook in. And those, you know, must, must haves are that, you know, make sure you, you know, how you have the little things i've got a spice cabinet that you wouldn't believe it's filled alphabetically with spices of course it is <laughs> so, i would believe that and, and that's important you've got to have every spice and you know one of the things i love to use is agave because it's a 
it's a natural sweetener. Yeah, so that, I, that has become very popular in margaritas and tell has, me what else. Yeah, how do you use it's it? It's great. It's great in margaritas. I use it a lot in my recipes for food because it just sweetens. Mm-hmm. In the fall, I use it on my harvest vegetables, which is uh, butternut squash, Brussels sprouts, and red cabbage. So it's just such a colorful, beautiful dish. And that agave just takes that little bit of bitterness out from the, you know, the Brussels so that you can, um, you know, have a nice flavor without having that, that extra bitter flavor. That is a wonderful tip. A lot. Yeah, Yeah, that is a wonderful tip because they, they are a little bit bitter, but I do love them when you roast them. They're so good. Yeah. And agave is a sweetener. I mean, it's, it's not, it's a natural sweetener. It's it's not, you know. And, and they, it comes light, and it's made from the agave plant. Of course, we all know that's where you get tequila from. Mm-hmm. So the it just has a unique sweet flavor. It's a lot like honey, but it's not that thick, um, over-rich flavor as honey. So I use it a lot, and I use it a lot in, you know, the baking and in, you know, seafood dishes. I love it on my salmon, and I use Cajun and spice, um, the agave, and some apricot jam and pour that over the salmon and it's just it's just delicious so i'm now i'm truly starving so everybody (laughs) listen to this and and everybody might want to contact you what is the best way to contact you armin well you can reach me on my email um at info at ac and events.com um or go to our website at ac and events um and um or you know just call the office 704-417-5881 or or i can give my cell phone to reach out because i'm always happy to call you know customers and get their numbers on my phone and return their calls i just don't give it to brides too soon because i don't (laughs) want them to antagonize me (laughs) oh everybody you can hear why i love him and why he inspires me and why he has won all of these wonderful awards do you have anything big on the horizon anything new coming up i don't know how you could possibly do anything else but do you we have so we have so many weddings this fall so it's 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 a blessing it's a blessing yes nothing's stopping you this time back to wedding season again and a good friend of mine, Karen Dorchy, is having her 65th birthday. I will be there. And we are going to celebrate, you know, like there's no tomorrow. Awesome. And it's going to be a great party. And, you know, it's just, it's great to have, you know, you go from fall, summer to this great harvest season that we have coming up and just great parties all around that. I'm doing some work with the Rapture Center as well. Um, we're doing a big fundraiser on November 4th. Um, so I'm looking, really looking forward to that. And if you're not familiar with the Raptor Center, they're right here at Lake Norman in Huntersville and they, they, um, they do wonderful they help, work. Yeah, they do wonderful work. They help revive and save Raptors that are hit by cars and, or hurt or, you know, abused, you know, mm-hmm. so they, they just do a wonderful job. We've released, uh, three red tail hawks at Beaver Dam. Oh. And I just, I just love working with organizations that, I enjoy being part of, just like you and I worked with the St. Jude's Hospital yes. and Make-A-Wish. I yes. mean, that was such a fun experience we did years ago and raised so much money for such a great cause. You know, so it's it's really great to be part of things like that. Well, to know you is to love you, Armin, and to enjoy your food is to just make you want more of that delicious food. I want you to come back. We have simply touched the surface of all the knowledge that you have and all the fun that you have and all the stories that you have to share. So promise me you will come back and visit with me again. Oh, I will. Of course I will, Barbara. And I'm going to have to come up there and have some food. And, uh, and one of these days we'll do it. We'll, we'll do our own little cooking set together. <laughs> I would, yes, I would love that. Would re- Oh, that's a really good idea. Anybody out there listening? We could do a really good job together. Well, that would be great to do it together. It really yes. would. I, I want to close it. I like to close with something that's special to me. And because you're such a special friend, I, I love this little quote about friends. And this is you, Armin. Best friends are the people in your life who make you laugh louder, make you smile <laughs> brighter, and make you live better. And that is you. 
Thank oh, you, that's Armin. Wonderful. Thank you, Barbara. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And I'm going to close with one more little thing because I like to end with the scripture too. And I think Beautiful. it's so interesting because this is in Job. It's Job 42:10, and it's kind of fun to think about and also inspiring people. And it says, "When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes, giving him twice as much as before." So let's wow, celebrate powerful. our friends. And Armin, you are one of the very best. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Barbara. You are too. I know I've been so blessed with having you as a friend for so many years and just enjoy doing everything that I do with you. And we're going to continue to work together. I'll be on your podcast plenty of times. I'm sure we've I got hope so. we, Like you said, we just hit the surface. Yes, we did. There's so, so many, many stories. To talk about. So much fun. Thank you, Armin. We will be talking very, very soon. 